Hi, good morning everyone. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, I know it's very early, so let's start uh, with a bit of exercise. Who here uh, uses Python 2? Who uses Python 3? <laughs> Who doesn't use Python at all? Oh, that's not so good. Um, who used uh, Eater tools from uh, the standard library? Okay, cool. Some Django users? Great. Okay, uh, so we're now everyone is uh, working up and we can start. A few words about me. I'm a senior data scientist at Magic Internet. You might not know Magic Internet, but uh, possibly you know uh, one of our products, which is uh, my video, uh, video platform, uh, also Empire, which is a music platform, and um, a product will launch very soon called Couch Video Day. I'm a geek, I'm sure you couldn't guess it by the title of uh, this talk. Uh, I've developed in Python from, uh, for the last uh, four years. Uh, with um, some um, one night suits with uh, Java, uh, C++, Scala, and so on. I try to be mostly harmless, and all the uh, examples uh, in this talk are in, in this GitHub repository. Okay, so uh, what we're going to talk about today, uh, it's roughly divided uh, to three parts, and hopefully a uh, fourth part that uh, we'll be able to make with questions and answers. Uh, I uh, design it to fit or to answer things that or issues that I had as um, a junior developer. So it is biased towards fields that I um, used to work with or work with. Uh, but on the other hand, I tried to make it as general as possible in the same time. Uh, so we're going to roughly cover uh, three things: data structures. Uh, concentrating on collection and iter tools, uh, dates, how dates are represented in uh, Python, what can we do with them, a bit of string, Unicode, and um, RE, and um, a bit more if hopefully uh, we have time. All the things here are from the Python standard library. Uh, and I do it intentionally. Of course, there are many packages out there, uh, but there are also many tools inside the standard library. And uh, we're, we can do a good uh, usage of them. Okay. <laughs> okay, so don't panic and let's go. So, okay, so this is uh, just from uh, the official documentations of uh, collections. And collections is uh, composed of um, five models. We have the named uh, tuple, which is basically uh, uh, easy way to write uh, a class with limited uh, attributes. Uh, the, a very common example for it is uh, defining point by saying we have x, we have y, and you will not able to add any more attributes. Um, this is quite equivalent to uh, using slots. While in slots you can also add methods. Uh, this whole talk is basically hints. Uh, so saying here slot is even a hint to a hint. Uh, we're not diving uh, deep into it. Uh, we have DQ, which is a list with pointers both to the uh, previous and the next um, item. We have counter and default dict that will go on in a second uh, for, um, for a bit of example. And an order dict, which is a dictionary that uh, remembers the order you put things inside. The reason I left the versions on the side is to let you know this wasn't always in Python. Uh, it was added and it, it is um, still added and developed. And if you worked with uh, images of AWS, specifically uh, EMR images, you know that there was uh, versions, all the versions of Python, for example, Python 2.4 or 2.5, and you didn't have a uh, counter or um, uh, default dict and you might, your code might crash, uh, but it worked before on your machine. Okay, so um, my first example, I have a dictionary and now I have an item 42 and I want to add one to count one. And uh, what do you think will happen? Well, yeah, a very sad story, Care. Okay, what can we do with it? 
One solution is we can use a default dict. And default dict set tells us we have a default value when you're accessing a key. In this case, if we define it as the int, we have a default value of zero. So we can add one um, very easily. We can also tweak it to have a default value of list and we get an empty list or a string and have an empty string and so on. We can even have a nested uh, default dict if we want to save some kind of tree structure, for example. So here we get a default dict. Yeah, that's very nice. Another solution would be to use counter. You can think of counter as default dict of integer with, um, with some kind of other attributes. I have some kind of buzz. Uh, with a bit of other attributes we'll see in the next slide, but for this functionality, for adding a plus one to uh, this dictionary, we get uh, this nice counter. Um, okay, so this one solved. Let's look for the second example. So yet again, I have um, two dictionaries with the same key and I want to edit up. Looks like some kind of uh, very trivial or expected behavior. But unfortunately, that doesn't work this way. The plus operand is not defined for dictionary. And that makes sense because we can have many types of values and might not, and the operand of plus might not define to all of them, or we have an D and E different values for one, and that also might not be defined. So counter count comes for help again. And for counters, the, the plus operand is defined, and we get the uh, behavior we always wanted. Good. So good for us. Now we have a collection, that's very nice, but we want to iterate over it because, well, primitive type is nice, but now we have several ones. Okay, so I have um, the list of all the books in the series and I want to number them to say this is the first one, this is the second one, and um, so on. So nice uh, tweak here, we have uh, the enumerate method. And not only that we have the enumerant method, which counts, we can start it from one. So we we'll get an output that looks something like this. Okay, this is not the best English grammar, but uh, it's still there and we still count it and know how to do it. Now I got some additional information about the publish year. And I want to say, okay, this book would publish in this year. So I can just use the zip method and uh, zip it together. Of course, we can do it even um, to be more sophisticated and to add the enumerate over it and then say, okay, the first book, The Hitchhiker Guide to the Galaxy, C was published on 1979, uh, but we're not doing it at the moment. Iter tools um, is uh, one of Python's uh, benefits for iterators, again, from uh, the official documentation. It is uh, usually divided to um, three parts. I'm not sure if this is the way I would do it, divide it, but um, we have uh, three kinds of iterators. We have the infinite iterators, which is, uh, well, count is not really uh, infinite, but we have cycle and we have repeat, which is um, basically generators. Uh, we have iterator uh, terminating on the uh, shortest input sequence, and we'll see, um, an example in a minute, uh, but basically saying, okay, we're going and then we stop from some reason. We either take the head of the um, object or the tail of it and uh, combinations generators and we'll see this also in a second. Good, um, so this is an example that I want to print only the books uh, that were published before uh, 1990 and I have um, the publisher and the book names, and uh, we, have, we are under the assumption that this is sorted. If it wasn't sorted, I couldn't uh, go over it and just uh, take uh, the head of the list, and uh, this is our re result. Okay, just, um, okay. Uh, just taking the name of the books, actually.
Okay, now I want to, I came here today, I had um, a flight from Berlin to Zurich and I'll have a flight back and I want to have two books to read. So I need to somehow choose which books I want to take. So, well, good luck, we have Python, we have, I can take uh, the combinations and uh, this is the combinations. But I'm still not satisfied because, okay, I put those in my luggage, but in which order should I read them? Okay, so now I can take a permutation with um, um, the argument of two, of course. Uh, okay, the print is just, uh, the output looks like this with also uh, the switching of position. Okay, we were. Okay, now I want to group the books by decades. Just, I want to see which books were um, published in which decade. So using uh, iter tools, I can have the group by. And the group by has two arguments. One argument is uh, the uh, object or the container we want to work on. And the other argument is the group by function. How would, how would you find the key, actually? And here we go, we have, um, and we get uh, this output for the 1970s Hitchhiker's Guide, 1980s old those books, and uh, 1990 uh, mostly harmless. Okay, next issue is dates. Uh, Python uh, Stone Library suggests three types of dates. Uh, day, time, date time, and calendar. Um, time is basically, uh, it is based on epoch time, and this is the most uh, basic solution. It helps us in um, functions like sleep, um, issuing timestamps, and so on. Date time is uh, one level uh, above it, may we say, and it's uh, good for time manipulations to access um, the members more easily, and uh, above, and it also has some support in uh, time zones, which uh, time doesn't doesn't uh, know how to handle. But well, time zone is only always a pain in the ass. Uh, about calendar, so again, a bit of higher abstractions, which is relevant to uh, regarding uh, calendar functionalities, uh, weeks of the year, um, quarters, and so on. So, a small um, example, sample about uh, data, very, very common use case, uh, just getting um, a string to date time and uh, the other way around, I try to time it to our time, I missed in seven minutes, um, but uh, we can uh, have it formatted, and it's actually this code, or with uh, the relevant tricking, would also work uh, with time. But uh, the interesting thing here, I say, is the time delta. I want to manipulate the time, for example, uh, in Magic Internet, we have the logs saved in um, a folder of year. Beneath this, we have uh, the months. Beneath this, we have um, the day in the month and a uh, pair hour. So if I want to tweak this, I can use, uh, for example, the time delta. And we have uh, this example. OK, this is the time I worked on the slides. And we have now, and we have the time within an hour. And this is. Uh, relatively easy and um, good to work with. Of course, we can also um, have it minus and say, look at one hour before. Now, a little issue with this. Okay, so I uh, took uh, the time now and then I took end now and I calculate the time difference, which is uh, not surprisingly less than a second, even much less than a second. And the time diff in seconds is zero, that makes sense. And uh, the total seconds is, well, also very, very small, as um, really uh, less than a second passed. However, I want to, I look at the time tomorrow and um, I get the time difference to be one day and this is, this also makes sense. And when I look at the seconds, it's zero. And this is kind of surprising because 
it's a whole day. And this is 60 multiplied by 60 multiplied by 24. And that's a lot. Um, so the issue thing here is that the interesting uh, variable or this class member is total seconds and not seconds. And I see a few um, cause that uh, fail there. So uh, before it hurts, uh, look at it. Um, yeah, OK, good. Uh, now for text. Um, so I came uh, from Zurich, and suppose I wanted to print uh, Zurich on my terminal. Well, uh, what do you think will happen? Yeah, this is a bit unfortunate. At uh, Python 2.7, I get a, a syntax error uh, for non-ASCII character. Uh, because Python is, uh, 2.7 is interpreted in ASCII. But what can I do with it? I can tell you, well, the coding I, uh, I'm using is UTF-8. And then everything uh, will work all right. And um, yeah, even if you're not uh, writing, even if you're using uh, only ASCII characters, you might have surprises sometimes. You're reading from a page from the internet, you're uh, reading data from social networks, uh, you're reading some kind of uh, meta, um, um, metadata from database, you might have non-ASCII characters, you're write, trying to write them, you're, you'll have an error, you'll get an error. Um, so uh, in Python 2.7, we have the string, which is a plain sequence of bytes, and uh, this is sometimes hurtful. We also have Unicode, but we have to tell uh, the program we are using Unicode. Uh, and this is encoded, and therefore we can have, uh, we can have more combinations than 256. And uh, in Python 3, the basic string is actually Unicode. Um, so it's more stable in that way. Uh, let's see uh, some examples. So uh, we want to check the length of this character with, with umlaut. Uh, any bets? Who's betting for one? Who's betting for two? Who's betting for three? Seven? No, OK, 42. Um, no, so OK, so that would uh, give us the results of two. And uh, this is uh, the default way it is um, it, it is represented in uh, UTF-8. What about this one? This is Unicode. Again, umlaut. What about this? Any bets for this one? One? OK, yes. Uh, you are correct. Um, and because, well, this is uh, Unicode, and this is encoded uh, this way, and uh, it's actually in my terminal coded Latin 1, and in Latin 1, this is uh, represented by 1. What about this? We're Unicode, but we are in UTF-8. 2, yes. I didn't know so who it was, but yes. Again, 2, and again, this is because the encoding on UTF-8. And for the final example here, yes, Latin 1 would be 1. And the reason uh, this one is important is, for example, if you are manipulating strings, if you are normalizing it, if you're checking uh, sanity for the length or something like this, you might change the length. So uh, you should be aware of it. You should, be, you should know that, OK, maybe the length changed because I changed the encoding. But that, that's all right. That, that's OK. That's what we are aiming to. OK, so a few things on regular expressions. So before that, we had the sentences. We created the sentences. Now we want to parse the sentences. And we have this sentence, and I want to get the book name and uh, the year it was published. So my first option is to create this regex, saying we're taking the alphanumeric uh, between uh, the quads and uh, the numbers in the end and take it out. And we're using uh, find all regex. We get this list uh, with these two elements. This is one option, but well, it's not very informative. It just gives me uh, this data. It doesn't give me uh, any data about the indexes. It doesn't give me uh, about the span whatsoever. It doesn't. It's hard to differentiate. So well, we can use match, and match will give us a match uh, element. 
and we can have the groups. This will give us uh, this result, and we can uh, access group one and have the name of the book, uh, get the span which indices uh, it is between, and ask for something that is called group dict. Hmm, interesting, but getting nothing. Uh, that's um, very uh, sad. So, uh, but the issue here is that I need to remember where I put my data, in which indices. And well, I'm not very good in remembering things. So I can use this one. It seems uh, a bit of ugly uh, regex, but it tells me that in the first position uh, for the um, for my regex, I have the data about the book, and in the second position, I have the data about the year. So I still get a match object, exactly the same. Same thing for uh, group one, same thing for the span. But now I have some data in my group dict, and I can say, oh cool, the book is this, and this is the year, and they don't need to, uh, to move it uh, through my script or uh, to remember it in some way. Um, yeah, and this is, um, I would say, a more easy way to, um, to, to move this data. Okay, so um, we are um, almost in the end, and um, yeah, so if I, w if I could have more time to talk, and um, what other things uh, that I would have talked about. Um, so reading data from the web, uh, using a URL lib and URL lib two, and maybe this is uh, one of the only times I would recommend uh, using a external library request, uh, as it's, uh, yeah, um, HTTP for humans, uh, using, uh, or uh, the second topic I would speak about is um, as async threads, uh, pools, and um, so on, doing some profiling in uh, Python, although most of the time we're maybe not limited by time. Of course, we'd like to know which methods or which, um, which uh, which objects consumes uh, the time takes or time takes out memory. We always want to be more efficient. And um, some more things about text, as uh, this is uh, the background I come from, but mostly things of uh, natural language processing. Uh, so now is a very good time for questions. Okay, if you have questions, please raise your hand and wait for the microphone. We have volunteers on both sides of the room with the microphone. Questions? Okay, so I guess the exercises in the beginning was not enough. Um, okay, so thank you very much and uh, see you later. Thank you, Tom.